This week we're going to be discussing material from chapter 6, proteins, and the building blocks of proteins, which are amino acids. The structure of amino acids and proteins we're going to start with first. And first I just want to point out some chemical differences between the macronutrients. We just got done discussing carbohydrate and lipids and looking at the chemical structure of those macronutrients. And if you remember, the elements in carbohydrates and fat are going to be carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That is going to be the main building block of protein as well, but we have one additional element in protein that you don't find in either carbohydrate or fat, and that is going to be nitrogen. So here we're looking at the structure of an amino acid. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So every amino acid is going to have a central carbon, and we'll look at a visual of this here in the next couple slides. Every amino acid is going to have an acid group, or this COOH group, or an amine, I should say, and an amine group, or a nitrogen containing group. Every amino acid will also have a side chain, sometimes referred to as an R group, but this side chain is going to be different for each amino acid. And this is what gives each amino acid its different identity, um, its different size, shape, electrical charge. And this will impact the shape of the protein depending on which amino acids are bonded together. So these top three characteristics here are always similar in amino acids. The side chain is what is going to be different between the amino acids. So here you can see just kind of a little cartoon version of an amino acid. Here's the nitrogen containing amine group. Here's that central carbon. The hydrogen's not shown here. Oops. Here's the acid or carboxyl group. And then here's the side chain. So let's look at a little bit more detailed view. So again, central carbon with the hydrogen. Um, the nitrogen group or amine group and the acid or carboxyl group. So this is the amino acid glycine. Can you see what the side chain would be here? Remember all amino acids are going to have this common backbone. So the side chain is going to be this hydrogen. So very simple side chain, one of the most simple amino acids. Here you can see um, this is a different amino acid, alanine and the side chain here is going to be this methyl group. A little bit more complex side chain, which you see here with phenylalanine. Of course, you do not have to remember these names or the different side groups. This is just meant to be a visual of how the different amino acids can differ from one another. Here's aspartic acid. So what is the structure of a protein? Well, proteins are amino acids. Amino acids are bonded together, and that is what ultimately forms the structure of a protein. We have about 20 different amino acids that the body uses to build proteins, and these amino acids are joined together by peptide bonds. There's an animation in the lecture that will demonstrate the peptide bond. Depending on what amino acids are joined together, the protein then coils and folds um, based on the interactions of that side chain. Are the side chains attracting one another? Are they repelling one another? Are these side chains hydrophobic? They don't like water, so they're trying to get in the middle of the protein globular structure. Are they hydrophilic? Are they on the outside? So the sequencing of amino acids will impact the shape of the protein. So if you were to think of a, a slinky, a slinky is a really good visual. Here I have it twist and turned of what a globular type protein would look like. And so if this is representing a protein, then this is going to be representing what? An amino acid. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So here, this is just a visual of those amino acids getting bonded together to ultimately form a polypeptide, which is a long chain of amino acids, which will form the actual protein structure.
How does the body know how to put these amino acids together in the first place to build a protein? Well, every cell has a copy of DNA, and this DNA gives the cell the message of what amino acids it needs to build certain proteins. All cells build proteins. All cells follow the genetic code on what amino acids to put together when building these proteins. And as I mentioned a few times now, the sequencing of those amino acids will determine the shape of the protein. So when the genetic code, when DNA gives the cell a wrong message and puts the wrong amino acids together, that imp impacts the shape and then impacts the function of the, the protein structure. And in your lecture, there is an example of how getting the wrong message and putting the wrong amino acids together will impact protein shape and be detrimental to that protein function. So you might be thinking, well, how does the body get the amino acids it needs in the first place to make protein? Well, the probably first thing that comes to your mind is, well, we know protein is in the diet and we eat protein. This is one of the reasons why we need to eat protein is to have the building blocks to make body proteins. Believe it or not, though, we don't need a whole lot of protein coming in the diet because our body is so good at holding on to and recycling the protein that it has. So we get amino acids by eating protein. We break down those proteins into amino acids and we absorb those amino acids to be utilized as the building blocks for building our own body proteins. We also can recycle old, worn out proteins in the body. The body is dynamic. We're constantly breaking down and rebuilding. And then the body actually can synthesize amino acids. And we'll talk um, more about that. So what are essential amino acids? Essential amino acids mean that these amino acids are essential that we get them in the diet. We must get them from foods. These are amino acids the body cannot make or synthesize. So if you were to have no protein in your diet whatsoever, you would create you would develop a protein deficiency because we have certain amino acids that we cannot make. We have to get them from foods. So the opposite of that, what are the non-essential amino acids? Well these are amino acids that the body can synthesize. So we don't necessarily have to get these amino acids from foods. What does a cell use to make these non-essential amino acids? Well, the body can use fragments of carbohydrate and fat that will provide the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen that we know is a part of the protein structure, but we still need a nitrogen source. We can't get nitrogen from carbohydrate and fat. That's not part of the chemical structure. So the nitrogen is going to have to come from still protein. It's going to either have to come from dietary protein, it's going to have to come from body protein, um, that's being used and we'll break that down because we need the nitrogen or from recycled amino acids. So we can synthesize amino acids but not all of them. We have about 20 amino acids that we use to build body proteins and about nine of these are essential. So the essential amino acids are shown here in this slide. Of course you don't have to memorize these. It's just to give you an idea of um, a list of those amino acids. So these amino acids are bonded together to form a long string of amino acids or a polypeptide. They start to coil and form this helix and then ultimately twist and turn and form this globular type protein based on the interactions of those side chains. We also have more fibrous um, proteins as well. Here we see a globular protein um, and we'll look at more of this structure and function relationship in the lecture outline.